It is arguably one of the most popular sites on Facebook with thousands of members. When Buyer Beware was founded, the intention was clear to educate buyers about their rights and warn them about anything and anyone who may want to take advantage of consumers. Little did those joining the group know that it would turn into an epicenter of extortionist cartels who identify a target, bully the person, demand protection fee, or else threaten to turn your life into a living hell through cyberbullying. Through bad work, Kenya, about five women have committed suicide or died in, you know, through depression due to bullying. shaming, just being dragged in the mud, and other, there are other people who are also still dealing with depression and stress and just trauma, including family members dealing with trauma, thanks to Buyer Beware Kenya. In this documentary, we unmask the faces of bloodthirsty, money-hungry administrators of Buyer Beware, who have quickly turned social media to Buyer Be Bullied. We will bring you tales of people who have fallen victim to the evil administrators. We paint pictures of distraught family members who have lost loved ones who could not take the shame, ridicule and name calling they were taken through by the administrators of the Facebook site. And we will give you a reason why you should stay alert and resist the bullying taking place in a space that should be used for socialization. What is cyberbullying? This is the use of electronic communication to instill fear, panic and manipulate an individual using the available social platforms online by sending intimidating or threatening messages. This is a common activity in all social media platforms in the world. Many of the victims who have been caught up in cyberbullying have fallen into depression and those that are not strong enough have committed suicide. Meet Paul Mburu, a widower to Millicent Wamboy. Uh, my name is Paul Mburu, husband uh, to the late uh, Millicent Wamboy. Until 31st August 2018, I didn't know what cyberbullying can do to a family. On that particular date, uh, Millicent Wamboi left to be with the Lord. Uh, she had uh, been under too much pressure from um, social media, uh, or what they call cyberbullying, on uh, personal issues with uh, fellow friends, fellow suppliers, and uh, probably people they were working with. When she found herself in a position that uh, she's indebted to people, uh, she was not treated fairly. That same page that she was one of the moderators, uh, some of the people there took it to a different page, and I came to learn later that uh, the page was uh, by a beware, where, was, where she was shamed and bashed and uh, with time, with uh, subsequent shaming, uh, Wamboi underwent uh, some de depression stage. She got into a point that she was, uh, she had to visit the doctor time and again uh, and later she couldn't hold it anymore. She had to like hide from people she she eventually moved out of the, the house uh, went to live with the parents but uh, shortly she decided uh, she wanted to be alone she went and uh, got her own house uh, she was pushed by uh, the page 
more, more, more so the buyer beware page uh, where she what we call a nickward uh, to make her look like she she has taken things from someone and uh, she'll never be able to pay but the same person they had agreed on um, the payments or the refund of what she owed the other person uh, but after too much uh, pressure and depression uh, one day uh, 31st August 2018 uh, one boy had to do the unimaginable and uh, she left this world and went to be with the Lord. Mildred Ati Owiso, an activist and a blogger, is one of the founders of Buyer Beware. She calls the shots in this popular group. She works with a team of other group administrators who help in achieving the group's mission. The late Brenda Waru, a mother of two, was a victim of cyberbullying through Buyer Beware Facebook page. Brenda had reported a case at a police station in Nairobi where she alleged that her ex-boyfriend had raped her two-year-old daughter. My name is Brenda. Brenda is my daughter. My daughter is the daughter of the daughter of the daughter of Jeffrey Chairman Kosea, now you know that. Richie, I am Toto. Therefore, I need your help. Therefore, I need your help. And I am begging you. Can you imagine Toto for three years? I'm at three years at the time for Jeff. I need you before one court. I need you. Sasa katoa hiyo jambo kwa marafiki. Sasa marafiki sijua kaanza kumshambulia, sijui ka yani mambo yalikuwa chungu. Mengine hata siwezi nikayakumbuka. Ilipofika mwaka 2017 mwezi wa 5 ndipo tulipata simu ya kwamba mwanao amepata ajali. Na Tulipoambiwa tu kuambiwa amekufa, tuliambiwa yuko hali mbaya. Mimi nilipoenda kesho yake, nikaenda nikapata mwili wa mwanangu. Nikaenda baadaye nyumbani mali alipokuwa naishi, nikapata mjuku wangu na mfanyikazi wake wakaanza kunielezea kilichotokea kaniambia ya kwamba alikuwa na mawazo sana mpaka alikuwa anamwambia mfanyikazi wake wa ndani mimi nina mawazo mimi kifa munichukurie mwanangu sababu wazazi wangu muda mrefu sijaongea nao hawajui nipo wapi lakini naona kama maisha yangu sitaishi kwa hii dunia Hiyo ndiyo jambo mfanyi kazi ya lipo niambia. Walio kuja, walio kuwa wanakuja marafiki zake. Walio kuwa naniambia ya kumba, alikuwa na mawazo tele. Mbaka alikuwa naongea nao kwenye message, kwenye whatsapp, akiwambia tatizo lao. Lake. Nika wambia jamani, si munge mpa advice, muambia tafuta wazazi. Hata kama ni shida inagani, rudi kwa wazazi wako. Usichukue maisha yako. Lakini marafiki yake wa wake waliniambia kwamba alikuwa tu anawaambia na mawazo lakini hawakujua ya kwamba atatoa maisha yake duniani. She came out of the border border according to the house girl and according to the statement of the people who saw the accident and she she grabbed the baby but because the house girl had had a time of this her getting annoyed at times in the house and complaining that somebody defiled my baby and nobody so she knew what this she knew that something is wrong she grabbed the baby back 
So what this girl did, she stripped the kit and jumped to the road. And of course, this is highway, Wayakiwe. You can imagine how many cars are passing at night. And she jumped into an oncoming car. And that's how she just shows heat. Since I didn't get I hey, sister, kitu gani kinacho muwa eti amekanyagwa na gari alafu nikaingia ndani mwanangu na akaniambia eti mama tumepata tatizo eti mwanangu amekanyagwa na gari abrenda Binguni. To authenticate the information given by Brenda's family, we sought one of the buyer beware administrators who willingly shared information of how the group bullied Brenda to death. My name is Jackie Polo. I was an admin in a group called Buy Beware Kenya on Facebook. When I joined Buy Beware, I liked the whole concept of it. Buy Beware shone spotlight on cons. It attempted to solve societal injustices. Buy Beware was there for a lot of people, including myself. When Brenda Waru came on, on Buy Beware, she was using a pseudo account, a pseudonym. Her pseudo account was called Dani Maone. And the reason why this girl came as Dani Maone was because she had alleged that her daughter was molested by an, an ex-boyfriend. So because of issues of molestation, Brenda did not want to expose her daughter as well as expose herself. So she came with a pseudo account hoping that somebody would believe her and want to give her help. She did not come, to, she, she was not hiding, so to speak. So, Mildred Atieno Owiso is one such person that claims that she's a criminologist, right? And because a lot of people believe in her on buyer beware, her word is law. So Mildred said that because of her knowledge of criminology, she can actually tell that Danny Maone was a liar. That is where the bullying began. And the bullying was horrendous on, 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 on Brenda Waru. At some point, Danny Maone, the pseudo account, inboxed Mildred and told Mildred that my actual name is Danny Waru, is, or rather, or is Brenda Waru. You can confirm this. My daughter's name is so-and-so. My daughter was molested by an ex-boyfriend, somebody named so-and-so. She named names. It was very simple and very, actually very easy to verify the claims of this girl. But what happened, this girl was bullied. Mildred claimed she was a liar and that she did not believe her. And because Mildred is powerful in the group, when she says something, everybody else just follows suit. Nobody in that group would have, you know, the mind to think differently. And the few that do think differently are either blocked, kicked out of the group, or just discredited in one way or the other. So Brenda was bullied up to a point where this girl took her life. And those are the dangers of social media. In as much as someone like me, if you would say certain things about me, I wouldn't take them to heart, another person is different and they would take things to heart. These are not the only cases that have been reported to us. In Kisumu, a woman by the name Elva Akinyi died after battling depression after she also became a victim of bullying in the same group according to her mother elva was a treasurer in a woman's charmer 
where she was accused of embezzling some money and one of the members in that chama posted her photo which ended up in the buyers beware group she became their target my name is Arini Sabiambo Olunga mm, I'm the mother to Elva Akini Olunga and uh, Elva is my third born Elva was a very social lady and uh, she had many friends but what shocked me I was found by some ladies that Elva one day they went and arrested Elva because they wanted some amount of money after Elva came from the, the, the cell, the torturing started. Because me, I don't go to the Facebook. So I was hearing people were telling me, what is wrong with Elva? Huh? There are very many funny, 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 funny messages in the, in, the, in the Facebook. So I was wondering what was happening. Then when it will came January, my first, uh, my, my last born was going to form one, Nangori boys. Then Elva told me, she's the one who's going to come and take that child to school. I gave Elva the school fees of the, the, my, 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 my son. Then everything, I done everything, shopping. Then they took that uh, Roy to school. That one was on 9th. But we come 10th. When I called Elva, Elva was in Kisumu, and Elva told me that my mommy, kichwa ina ni uma ata suwezi kubeba kichwa ju. So I was wondering, ni kamuliza Elva, ukona stress, ati ata sijui. Then I told her, just go, and then make sure you go to hospital. That is how, how the sickness started. But if if I analyze, I saw, I saw that it was deep, uh, uh, stress. Elva was stressed. Then I told her, go to Nairobi, because she had sisters in Nairobi. I told her to go to Nairobi. Go to Nairobi and stay with your sisters. Elva went to Nairobi. There, she took about two weeks. And they were calling me, Mommy, Elva seems Zuri. Because Elva was now not eating. She was depressed. She was not eating. Then, this one went. We were communicating through the, 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 the phone. Then, they told me now Elva cannot even do anything. That's from 10th. Then I decided that Elva should be brought back home so that I can monitor her. She was brought home. It was on a Friday. I cannot remember it was which date. But it was early February. She came here. It was on a Friday. She arrived, uh, arrived here about, it was about 9 a.m. When I saw my daughter coming out of the, the vehicle, I cried because it was not Elva I knew. <sighs> she entered the house. You know, Elva was just now talking as if Kichwa in Aruka. Mm -hmm. Then come Sunday night. The maid called me. Ati mami. Elva miyanguka chini. Nika uliza amiyanguka chini kwa nini. Ati kuja unisaidie. I went. I went 
Akakuta kama ameanguka chini. Tukamshika tukamrudisha kwa kitanda. Then at that time I decided to call a taxi. I said now I cannot stay with Elba in the house here. Might be damu imeisha kwa mwili. Wacha nimpeleke hospitali hata kama muongeze damu. Then we went to Siaya Bama Hospital. Then I was admitted there. Then come on Thursday. Is when I started to see Elva now is it's becoming weaker. She was just becoming weak. Weak. When it reached morning, Elva could not wake up. She started diarrhearing now. There was a, an, a, a, another lady there. She gave me the pamper. But before I used the pamper, Elva was gone. And I was seeing like this. I was alone with her in the hospital. These are just a few cases that are profiled. However, over 10 people are said to have committed suicide after they fell victims of cyberbullying from these popular groups on social media. Jackie Polo further explains she joined Buyers Beware a few years ago. She tells us due to a massive following of the group, the group now is being used by influential people and companies to divert attention on certain issues or name cleansing by individuals. A local bank got into an agreement with the group where the group was hired to cleanse the bank from customer complaints online. At some point on Barbieware Kenya, we were receiving a lot of complaints from members as well as non-members who would send in messages concerning um, Cooperative Bank of Kenya. Uh, about a week later, Mildred calls me and tells me that Cooperative Bank of Kenya has reached out to her. I do not know who reached out to who first, but she told me that Cooperative Bank of Kenya reached out to her. Somebody called um, Ngumo Kahiga asked for a meeting with the admins of Barbieware. During the meeting, Ngumo Kahiga said that they're getting, you know, they're getting a lot of negative publicity online concerning their bank and so they were concerned. As a brand, <coughs> Cooperative Bank of Kenya uh, wanted to, you know, alleviate this negative publicity. So they, you know, wanted a, an agreement between them and, and Buy Beware Kenya that whenever a complaint comes through Buy Beware, the admins do not send the complaint out there. Because what normally happens in Buy Beware is that if you do, send a, if you do have a, a post, if you put up a post, the post first goes to the admin panel and then the admins approve it. So essentially what Ngumo was saying is that whenever a complaint would come, we shouldn't post, we would, we should, uh, you know, first send it to him so that Corporate Bank of Kenya can deal with the complaint and then we don't post at all. There were lots of com complaints against Corporate Bank by members of Buyer Beware who were customers in that bank. There will be different complaints from someone withdrawing from an ATM and getting less money to, I'm just giving an examples, to another person, you know, uh, getting a loan and then the loan officer, I don't know, wanting a bribe, just many, many, many complaints. And so at least every other day, we would be putting out a story out there about Cooperative Bank of Kenya. Barbie Ware at that time, you know, was a huge group. It was followed by a lot of people. There were lots of members within the group. And so Ngumo said, or rather Ngumo proposed in front of uh, Mildred and myself that Tuneza Saidiana, meaning we can work together. That if, uh, whenever, whenever a complaint would come to buy beware, the admins shouldn't put the, the complaint out there to Kanyagie hear your story, if you know what I mean. So um, we, we tried to find out how much they would pay us. And so we proposed certain figures. And for that first um, 
job that we do together with cooperative bank so that he does not appear as a bribe like cooperative bank was bribing us which is actually what it was but so it doesn't appear so uh, Ngumo Kahiga told me to make a proposal rather told us to make a proposal and then Mildred Ati told me that hey Jackie I know you you're good at proposal writing how about you write a proposal because Mimi says and a proposal siju ku andika proposal so she told me to write a proposal to cooperative bank of Kenya which I did I went back home I did not sleep and the whole night I did research and I wrote a proposal a befitting proposal for cooperative bank of Kenya and the following day in the morning I sent it to Ngumo Kahiga I have a copy of that um, proposal here with me Ngumo Kahiga responded by telling me he has received he, he confirmed receipt of this proposal and he told me it was actually a very good proposal so based on that he sent me an email and told me that um, he says uh, I would read he says uh, hi Jackie please find attached our LPO the next thing they sent us was an LPO and so in the LPO if I could just uh, read that is the first one if I could just read it has different details but it arrives at a figure of 900 900,000 nearly a million so that is what we had agreed on and so um, this money Mildred and I was you know was supposed to split the amount was actually sent to uh, buyer beware's account but because when we were going to do a search of, uh, of buyer beware we found that the name buyer beware Kenya was already taken by somebody else it was not available so even as the group remains on Facebook as buyer beware Kenya that is somebody else's that is somebody else's uh, group it is not it does not belong to where this money went to this money went to buyer awareness Kenya because that was that was now like the closest name would find to buyer beware Kenya right so Mildred actually we saw, uh, registered the or rather I helped her register it and after the registration I was supposed to be a signatory to the account but on that very day that uh, we were going to open an account I did not have an ID my ID was lost I went to Huduma Center to get a, a copy of you know to get another ID and it would, it would take some time before an ID comes out I think a couple of days we were told so then I told Mildred how about you just open an account because at that time I trusted her completely she was my friend so I told her open an account with your your ID and then when money is deposited you will just give me my share we had a late disagreement we did not um, write anything down I didn't um, see the purpose of that so she opened an account and within days money was deposited into that account Ngumo called me because remember I was liasing with Ngumo I'm the one who sent him the proposal he was liasing more with me after we had met Ati, and, uh, Ati himself and myself after we had met he was liasing more with me than with her then the second amount that was paid was 1,551,000 so as far as I know as far as I'm aware Cooperative Bank of Kenya has sent money twice to buy beware Kenya or buyer awareness Kenya the group so that the group admins do not put stories out there negative stories out there about cooperative bank of Kenya and at some point I noticed that uh, within buyer beware the the complaints against cooperative bank would be preposterous sometimes too many ridiculous and then I noticed that I asked uh, Mildred one day that hey these complaints are Cooperative Bank is getting a lot of complaints and she told me you know you have to make up some of these stories in order to have a job meaning Mildred was making up fake stories in order to get to get paid by Cooperative Bank of Kenya this is something she did by herself the money went to her she was the one who benefited from that amount of money so this is this goes against what by beware was actually meant for it is an intricate group which is running the lives of many through propaganda. The group has also perfected their game to an extent of bullying the newsmakers, leading to President Uhuru Kenyatta's Facebook account deleted. Because of bullying, Buyer Beware Kenya at some point became a political group where Mildred Atio Wiso would put something, for example, about our own president, Uhuru Kenyatta, and then members of Babi Kenya would run to Uhuru Kenyatta's page, and then they would troll the president, troll, they managed to troll the president out of Facebook. 
hiring professional bloggers to demonize anybody or to demonize the judiciary. We are not going to win the war against corruption by that. Like today, you must have seen in the media, I'm shown they are naked, massaging people who are supposed to be corrupt. We are not going to win the war against corruption by that kind of, those kind of gimmicks. One group in our society called bloggers, you know, we wanted to pass a law to stop these people from insulting all of us, left, right and center. But then, you know, it was taken to court and the court decided it was unconstitutional. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why people would end up thinking it's just okay. It's okay to make people cry. But honestly speaking, I pray that this will be the last time we will hear of buyer beware. We are not seeing, and the worst bit is even when you report, when you report it, when you report to Facebook, when you report to, and that's why this pseudo thing comes, is nothing is done. So for how many deaths will happen so that we put it to a stop? How many people will we bury? How many deaths will we get so that at the end of the day, this page can be closed? I put it out to you. <laughs> These are just but a few of the cases of cyberbullying in the country. The question is, who will step up and stop this vice in the country? A vice that has left families in shambles.